The UNCC Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering has tasked our group with the creation of an automated robotic machine capable of identifying and sorting LEGO Mindstorms pieces. The need for this robot arose out of a robotics program held by the ECE department focused on teaching the fundamentals of robotics to children. The children often put parts back into the wrong bins in the Mindstorms kits as well as trade or lose parts. Our robot is designed to reduce the amount of time and manpower required to sort these kits in preparation for the next robotics session. In order to deliver a product to satisfy the needs of the department, we were given a set of requirements and specifications. Some of these requirements are as listed. The only pieces that the robot is required to sort are the ones in the top tray. These pieces are shown in the figure below. To do this, the robot must be able to identify those pieces on a flat surface, then get those parts into the respective spots on the tray. As for performance, the goal of the robot is to be able to do its entire operation within 10 minutes, while detecting and classifying the pieces at a minimum accuracy of 98%. The final step is for the robot to generate a report detailing which parts are present, missing, or extra. The first steps taken to design the project began with how to control the various systems of the robot. A Raspberry Pi was selected because it can control the image identification code, as well as the motor controls and other sensors used. For materials, 3D printed parts were chosen as they are easy to produce and require less time and cost while still creating a complex part. The frame is made out of 80-20 material, it is an extruded aluminum, and it allows for a modular system that still provides structural support. This design allows for easy assembly and modification for future use. There are two stages used in the mechanical separation portion of the robot, the main conveyor belt and the shakers. The main conveyor belt takes LEGO parts from the loading area across the robot to the shakers. This provides a uniform, constant flow of parts that will not overload the system. The second part is the shakers. These are V-shaped troughs that with a vibration motion and varying angles will sit there and move parts down into the loading chamber but, because of the varying angle, control the speed at which they go and the spacing between each one. This allows the sensors to only let one part into the light chamber at a time. The light chamber is another simple conveyor belt that will pull parts into the identification zone and then down into the chute and tray sorting method. The chute is simply a trough that will sit there and guide the parts down while a linear actuator moves the tray back and forth to sit there and precisely put each part into its identifiable tray. The image classification is done through using the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi camera. The code is written in Python language and is achievable with the help of many libraries like TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a library of files that allows for deep machine learning. Its main usage for the robot is to be able to detect the Lego piece and give a prediction on said piece. In order to do this, however, we must first make a model with pictures of all the Lego pieces that we have. The team used Google's Teachable Machine to assist with this task, and with Teachable Machine, we were able to take pictures of all our LEGO pieces in every orientation that we needed, and we were able to even train our model using it. We had a few ideas on how we wanted to approach the image classification process on the robot, but ultimately we decided to go with the method that when a LEGO piece enters the scanning chamber, the piece will keep going until it reaches the Raspberry Pi camera that would be set on top of the scanning chamber. The piece will stop with the, help, with the help of sensors and then with the camera it will take a single picture of the LEGO piece and the code will make a prediction on what it thinks it is. After identifying the piece, it will record the name of that piece to go in the final parts list report that will be generated at the end of the code. A Raspberry Pi was chosen to be the main control unit for this robot. The Raspberry Pi was chosen for its ability to control motors and sensors from the GPIO bins while still being able to run image processing software such as TensorFlow and OpenCV. All of the code to control this robot was written using Python. The DC motors that drive the conveyors are run from one Adafruit board powered at 12 volts and the smaller shaker motors that drive the shaker trays are controlled from a second Adafruit board powered by 5 volts. The stepper motor required a separate driver board to operate at our required speed, but that board is also controlled via PWM signals from the Raspberry Pi. The servo motor that drives the part chute, as well as the IR sensor at the scanning chamber, are also controlled via the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins and are powered by 5 volts from the Adafruit board. This way, 
the power source for the Raspberry Pi only has to provide power for itself. To test the motor control system of this robot, each subsystem was tested independently to ensure its function before testing of the combined system was conducted. This included testing initial code for the DC motors, servo motor, and stepper motor before the mechanical subsystems they power were constructed. Next, as each subsystem was constructed, test code was written and executed to test each subsystem independently for function. As subsystems were attached to the frame, testing of multiple subsystems together was conducted until all subsystems were tested together. Upon testing the image classification code, there were many things that we observed. The results were very inconsistent. Sometimes the code would identify the piece correctly, but when trying to identify the same part again, it would identify it wrong. Sometimes it would identify the piece completely right 100% of the times, and sometimes the piece would not come close to what it actually is. When troubleshooting the problem, we downloaded the pictures taken with Teachable Machine and realized that the quality of the pictures taken were very blurry and just overall not really good. Teachable Machine applies their own filters and corrections to the pictures in order to fit their own criteria. We believe this was the main issue that was causing the inaccuracies with our code. In the end, all of the motor control system code was working as designed. Code was developed to simulate the process of the robot without incorporation of the image identification and all systems were executing correctly. To enhance the robot's ability to detect parts falling from the shaker tray onto the scanning conveyor, the IR sensor should be replaced with a laser module. The laser module has the same connections and code behavior as the IR sensor, but can more accurately detect small parts falling onto the conveyor. It is recommended to reduce the amount of friction in the belt drive so the robot to perform more smoothly, whether that be through changing the design or changing the material of the axles. It is also recommended to adjust the frame of the robot to reduce the overall size, as well as to make the whole robot vibrate less while everything is running. The team came up with a solution to try and mitigate the filters that Teachable Machine applies to the sample pictures. The plan was to take high quality pictures with a Raspberry Pi camera using a code and then manually upload those pictures into the Teachable Machine. From there, the team will use Teacher Machine to again train the model. The team hopes this method will lessen the amount of filters and corrections that Teacher Machine applies to the sample pictures and will help improve the accuracy of the code's prediction.